Hello, I am Dr. Carlos H. Schenk, MD, Professor of Psychiatry at the University of Minnesota Medical School in Minneapolis. I practice sleep medicine and also outpatient psychiatry. The focus of this quick take is on the use of diridoxorant among patients with chronic insomnia, a retrospective observational analysis published recently in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine. Now, diridoxorant is the latest and the third of the so-called DORAs, dual orexin receptor antagonists for treating insomnia. And you may wonder, why should I be interested in this? It sounds complicated. Well, it's a very exciting new class of medication because it turns off wakefulness. All the other hypnotic medications that had been in use, benzodiazepines, benzodiazepine receptor agonists, enhance inhibitory neurotransmitters and enhance sleep. In contrast with the DORAs, the dual orexin receptor antagonists, they turn off wakefulness, a completely different mechanism of action that offers great promise in the treatment of insomnia. Now, for me as a sleep physician and sleep researcher, what's particularly fascinating is that orexin, also called hypocretin, is a neurotransmitter only made in a particular area of the hypothalamus, the dorsal and lateral area of the hypothalamus. And two different groups discovered hypocretin and orexin in 1998. And the deficiency of these neurotransmitters is the cause of narcolepsy, a well-known and highly characterized sleep disorder where people have sleep attacks, they have excessive daytime sleepiness, but they also have cataplexy, the sudden loss of muscle tone and wakefulness, hypnagogic hallucinations, visual hallucinations, falling asleep, or hypnopompic hallucinations upon awakening from sleep that can be very terrifying. So it has a tetrad of symptoms besides the sleep attacks. Now, what's so interesting is that the consequence of identifying hypocretin and orexin deficiency as the cause of narcolepsy ultimately resulted in the production of medications to treat insomnia, and yet we don't have therapy for treating narcolepsy. It's in the works, but the first pharmacologic consequence of identifying hypocretin and orexin deficiency as the cause of narcolepsy is the treatment of insomnia by having these dual orexin receptor antagonists turn off wakefulness. In other words, the treatment of insomnia with these medications reduces an artificial narcolepsy at bedtime. And physicians need to know this because of the potential side effects of the narcoleptic tetrad. People on the DORAs may develop some hypnagogic hallucinations. It may be frightening to them, but you have to let them know that it's possible and it's not dangerous. They're not having a stroke or anything like that. And also they may have some you know, sleep paralysis in the process of falling asleep or waking up. It's quite rare, but I think it's important to notify the patients or else uh, they may have an undue anxiety with this potential type of side effects. At any rate, with the diridoxorant, the authors did a very good job in their study. Basically, it was a study in which patients switched off other therapies of their insomnia that were not working that well and switched on diridoxorant therapy. And the authors are very meticulous. This is a very well-conducted study, I should say. And 78% of the cohort of 86 patients demonstrated a clinically meaningful improvement as defined by, by at least a six-point drop in a very particular insomnia severity index score. And so they, the, the authors demonstrated great efficacy in switching patients from various other medications that were suboptimal in the benefit of insomnia to this latest DORA medication, diridoxorant. And so the data suggests that for insomnia patients with an incomplete response to current therapy, Switching to diridoxorant is safe and may be an effective alternative therapy. I should also point out that the first two DORAs were Suvorexorant that came out in 2014, followed by Lembarexant, and finally diridoxorant that has the shortest terminal half-life than its predecessors, 8 hours versus 12 hours for Suvorexorant and 17 to 19 hours for Lembarexorant, which may minimize any morning over-sedation. And it has a very favorable side effect profile with improvement in sleep parameters over existing insomnia medications. Now, in this particular study, the patients had been switched from a variety of other hypnotic medications that were not fully effective or minimally effective, including the GABA-A medications, trazodone, atypical antipsychotics, and tricyclic antidepressants. So a broad range of other medications had been ineffective and the switch to diridoxorant provided substantial benefit in the treatment of their insomnia. 
Also, following 30 nights of diridoxorin treatment, 79% of the patients reported improvement in daytime symptoms related to suboptimal nocturnal sleep, including one-third of patients reporting that their daytime symptoms were nearly or entirely resolved, and they also had increased daytime alertness. And in the uh, discussion, the authors correctly emphasized that the concept of, quote, turning off wake, end quote, via the orexin pathway as opposed to, quote, turning on sleep, end quote, via the GABA pathway has been of great interest to the sleep community as we move towards a more personalized approach to treatment. And I cannot emphasize enough how correct this statement is and how exciting the future of the treatment of insomnia is with the DORA class of medications. And in fact, in this particular study, longer-term data, which was available for 59 out of the 86 patients, demonstrated a consistent and durable response to this medication. And also, the authors were encouraged that only two patients discontinued the diridoxin between the one-month and three-month time period. Also, there is no differential effect amongst the patients with respect to the number of prior medication treatment trials. Also, the authors found quite remarkable that there was a marked response after many years of suffering from fragmented sleep from chronic insomnia. Finally, the authors also emphasize that the use of DORA medication has not yet been studied in patients with severe obstructive sleep apnea, and future studies should address this issue.